Goedenavond, bonsoir. Namens Aplus Architecture in Belgium en Bozar heet ik jullie van harte welkom. Vanavond hebben wij het genoegen, Xavier de Geiter van het Brussels bureau XDGA, te mogen uitnodigen voor een lezing over zijn werk. Après avoir travaillé une dizaine d'années au sein du bureau OMA à Rotterdam, Xavier de Geiter fonde son propre bureau à la fin des années 80. Il se fait remarquer très vite par des projets radicaux et provocateurs tels que le Carrefour de l'Europe à Bruxelles ou le Mass à Anvers et par la publication Aftersprawl. Et d'ailleurs, c'est toujours le cas, comme écrit euh, Véronique Paté dans l'interview qu'elle a faite euh, et qui a été avec Xavier de Guedre et qui a été publiée dans le dernier numéro d'Aplus. Il écrit que les réalisations récentes du bureau sont encore et toujours teintées du même esprit de subversion. We hebben het dan uiteraard over recente projecten, zoals het provinciehuis in Antwerpen, of het Rogierplein in Brussel, of de Melopeeschool in Gent. Het is geen wonder dat deze drie projecten allemaal genomineerd werden voor de Brussels Architecture Prize door een internationale jury. Het zijn ook projecten die heel veel weerklank gevonden hebben in de nationale en internationale pers. Maar qua publicatie is het de kroon op het werk misschien ook wel de laatste uitgave van El Croquis over het werk van Xavier de Geiter. Al de tweede El Croquis die over hem verschijnt. Il était donc grand temps de l'inviter pour une conférence ici. Mais avant de lui donner la parole, je voudrais d'abord remercier le Vlaamse Overheid, la Fédération Wallonie-Bruxelles, la région Bruxelles-Capitale, la ville de Bruxelles. Et je voudrais particulièrement remercier notre partenaire structurel FABLESEM pour le soutien à cette conférence. Parce que, comme vous le savez peut-être, FABLESEM organise déjà pour la dixième fois la Concrete Design Competition sur la thématique, cette fois-ci, Reimagine. Et j'invite tous les étudiants dans la salle ce soir d'y participer. Mais nu, dames et heren, geef ik graag het woord aan Xavier de Geiter. Hartelijk dank. Good evening. Um, I was asked uh, a few things. Uh, first, to speak in English, and uh, secondly, to uh, talk about uh, recent projects, uh, but not whatever recent project. Uh, I have to talk about the three that were already named, and so uh, the time will be too short uh, to to talk about recent projects in general, because um, we do uh, in one year at least uh, uh, 10 competitions, and most of these I cannot show because they have not been judged yet. Uh, then there is also a private project uh, that uh, uh, clients do not want us uh, to uh, show yet. Uh, so uh, anyhow, the, uh, the presentation of tonight is, uh, is a kind of, uh, is only a fraction of what we do, and I could easily do uh, another lecture tomorrow if you want. Uh, Um, so, the um, lecture is organized uh, through uh, teams, not through uh, really uh, projects, and they are, the, the teams are um, uh, explained through uh, projects. I want to start uh, with uh, a project that is uh, uh, underway, that the uh, construction has begun. Um, in Brussels, uh, in Anderlecht, and uh, a very interesting uh, demand. I also have to say that uh, all of the projects I show tonight are uh, the result of competitions. Uh, and so this first project is, uh, the main theme is uh, that it didn't, didn't really have a program, or at least uh, it has a program for the time being, but uh, it is almost certain that uh, this uh, uh, program will change uh, in time. So for once, uh, we had to design a, a building that, uh, of which the form is not simply based uh, on its program. Uh, it is for a, a car uh, importer, 
uh, a firm that is today a car importer and that was a car importer for a long time, but that will not uh, continue. Um, they are transforming themselves as a company uh, from a car dealer uh, towards uh, a mobility provider. And so, um, the comp here are a few images of the, the competition uh, model and uh, an image. And uh, what you see here is uh, a car showroom uh, for different brands. Uh, but we know that uh, in the course of time, uh, uh, showrooms will be uh, superfluous uh, because uh, people probably will not buy cars anymore. Uh, also, it has a, a big uh, garage for uh, repair uh, of cars, and we all know that uh, electric cars uh, do not really need a lot of repair. Uh, so the program was not known, although uh, today we have to uh, work with uh, a certain uh, definition of a program, among which uh, this uh, showroom uh, and uh, a repair uh, space uh, for uh, cars. And for the rest, there's a lot of... Uh, uh, undefined uh, space. Um, part of it is inside for the time being, part of it is uh, outside. A uh, lot of car uh, uh, storage uh, also. Uh, maybe some uh, other activities in the building. We are uh, along the canal, as you could see, in uh, Anderlecht. And uh, this whole zone is uh, being uh, regenerated. And uh, one of the demands from the side of the government is to, do, uh, to maintain uh, industrial activity and to combine it with uh, uh, livability uh, in the form of uh, new housing. So the, the program in itself, the, the activity uh, is uh, uh, perfect on this uh, uh, spot. Um, but as you can see, uh, we could not uh, define the form uh, of the building on the basis of a program. So what you see here is a diagram that shows uh, on, on what uh, items uh, the, the, the form uh, was generated. On the one hand, uh, there is a, a kind of a strange uh, a boundary uh, for the site, an irregular uh, site. Uh, along it are uh, two boulevards uh, that uh, are somehow curved, and then uh, there will be a movement uh, of cars into the building, uh, but also next to uh, the building uh, for trucks uh, to move and to, uh, to unload on ground floor. So all these uh, things together uh, made, and, and, and also as a fourth point uh, that uh, they, uh, the client wanted to uh, use the site as much as possible, so there's a kind of uh, uh, oversize uh, almost on, the, on this site. Uh, therefore, we uh, made a kind of synthesis uh, in the form of a curving uh, building that uh, follows all these uh, movements. Um, for the rest, uh, the, the form after the competition uh, evolved. Uh, but did not really change. Uh, we uh, went uh, searching for the boundaries uh, of the site. We had to uh, escape from uh, some restraints, uh, but basically uh, the outer form uh, remained and uh, in itself has very little uh, to do uh, with the inside. Because the inside is a totally uh, orthogonal uh, structure uh, that is uh, based on uh, a form of uh, circularity, I will explain later. Uh, the size of the uh, building is uh, about 80 by uh, 60 meters in uh, section, and so uh, if one wants to do in the course of time all kinds of, uh, of activities, uh, daylight is needed, and therefore uh, a more or less reg a regular uh, pattern of uh, courtyards uh, was cut uh, out of it. Um, what you see here is a, a building that, uh, with simply uh, four floors, one underground and one uh, uh, floor on, uh, on the roof. Uh, and uh, that looks uh, quite uh, equal, although we know that uh, activity uh, will uh, be very different, and, uh, but we don't know uh, exactly what. On this image you see uh, the left part that is, uh, uh, for the time being, completely outside, uh, except for the underground. The right part is uh, inside and has, um, has a climate inside. And this is the, the main uh, plan of the whole building. 
uh, we call it uh, the waffle uh, plan. Uh, it has basically uh, this outer form. It has an orthogonal uh, structure inside on a grid of uh, 16 by 16 meters. And uh, you see the concrete uh, structure, you see the patios, you also see a few cores, uh, and that's about it. Uh, some diagonals that uh, support uh, a ramp that sits on the outside of the building. And uh, that is the fixed part of the building. Uh, and in the section here, uh, one can see uh, that uh, these concrete floors, indicated in blue uh, here, uh, only appear uh, every two floors. So they are uh, seven meters uh, off uh, each other. And in between, uh, there will be a steel structure uh, that can be uh, taken away uh, in the course of time when uh, higher spaces uh, would be needed. For the time being, there is only one uh, uh, space of uh, seven meter netto uh, height, uh, and that is for the garage that sits on uh, minus one. So uh, a form of uh, circularity that uh, uh, thinks um, yeah, a long time uh, ahead. And in this diagram, one sees the uh, how uh, the, the building itself uh, was uh, conceived. On the lower uh, part of the diagram, one sees the, the concrete structure uh, that will probably not change with a very heavy uh, structure, uh, with a, a huge uh, capacity for loads uh, everywhere. And uh, above it uh, are the steel floors that will be hung uh, from the uh, concrete uh, floors. That, is, uh, that can be changed uh, in time. It will not change uh, every decennium, but uh, there is the possibility. And uh, the uh, drawing above uh, shows uh, things that, are, that might uh, change uh, more often. Uh, the facade, and uh, above it uh, there is the, uh, all the techniques, or at least the spaces for the techniques that are in general uh, oversized. And uh, that will uh, change maybe uh, every 20 years. And then at last, uh, there is the interior uh, uh, um, materials, uh, decoration, uh, but also uh, small-scale uh, circulation that uh, uh, might uh, change uh, very often. So uh, in the whole uh, discourse of uh, uh, circularity today, uh, this is a, a building that is not so much uh, based on uh, circularity in terms of uh, material use, uh, but in the uh, use of uh, uh, the building itself. A few images, uh, one uh, seen from the canal, an open structure basically, uh, with um, um, a ramp uh, going up until the uh, upper floor. Uh, one uh, image that shows on the Boulevard Industriel uh, this uh, showroom for the time being. So it's uh, one of the patios, but it is here this uh, uh, guy uh, uh, um, uh, that is organized in the form of an uh, atrium, an atrium that uh, uh, concentrates all the uh, car brands uh, around and that uh, culminates on top uh, into a restaurant uh, that sits on the uh, upper floor. Uh, a little further, uh, this uh, image uh, shows um, an, one of the patios that, uh, that uh, cuts uh, into the facade, and this one, uh, and in first instance, uh, will be used as uh, an entrance uh, for other companies uh, that will join uh, uh, in this building. Um, a little further is the, uh, the main ramp uh, going up until the last floor. Uh, there is also a ramp behind it that goes down towards the garage, and one looks uh, into uh, the sunken uh, uh, garage on minus one. Um, so the, the, this part is completely glazed uh, with a large uh, uh, sun uh, blinds, um, and uh, the intention is, of course, that uh, if we want uh, any activity to be possible uh, on this site, uh, then uh, with the depth of the building uh, and the netto height of 3,50 meters, 50, uh, a lot of uh, glass is needed in the facade. A few images uh, of the interior uh, organization. This is uh, uh, from uh, a floor, on the second floor, uh, looking uh, into the atrium. 
uh, with uh, heavy columns in black in uh, concrete and then uh, hung uh, with steel rods, uh, the steel floor that uh, sits in between. Uh, another image that uh, shows the, what is now the, for now the parking uh, garage. It has the patios, we don't need them today, but they might be, uh, become uh, very useful in uh, uh, the near future. And a ramp, uh, the ramp that uh, uh, runs up the building uh, along the open uh, facade. Um, and this is a view uh, simply uh, along the Boulevard Industriel. Uh, so for, for us, a very uh, interesting uh, uh, exercise with a kind of oversize in terms of uh, structure. Uh, the, as I said, the concrete floors, uh, they can uh, uh, take uh, more or less uh, uh, a thousand kilo uh, per square meter, uh, but then uh, the steel floors uh, hang uh, from this, uh, uh, from this uh, uh, concrete floor. Um, another uh, thing that we are uh, pretty enthusiastic uh, of is uh, uh, also uh, a concept that is uh, completely uh, generated uh, from uh, a situation and a specific uh, demand. Uh, it is about uh, the school building uh, we did in, um, in Ghent um, about one year ago, uh, finished one year ago, uh, delayed uh, quite a lot by uh, COVID. Um, a building uh, that, is, that might, that will be uh, the heart of uh, a new uh, development of um, uh, land that is uh, one on the harbor uh, of Ghent with uh, a dock uh, in the middle. And what you see here is a drawing uh, of uh, the urban plan, uh, part of the urban plan. Uh, it was originally uh, designed by uh, OMA and uh, conceived as a, a chopstick uh, urbanism. Uh, that means uh, simply uh, different uh, uh, buildings uh, mostly housing um, uh, altered by uh, green uh, spaces. And uh, what you see in this uh, uh, first part of the development is that uh, the available uh, depth uh, of the site is uh, extremely limited. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a strip uh, that is only 70 meters uh, wide. And uh, the intention is, of course, uh, uh, to create a certain a certain uh, sense of uh, urbanity, which is not uh, easy in, just in such a, a narrow strip that has water on one side and uh, heavy uh, logistics and uh, infrastructure of the harbor on the uh, backside. Uh, of course, that will uh, evolve in time. The neighborhood will grow, but not today. And uh, so, uh, in order to create this uh, uh, sense of uh, uh, urbanity, uh, one of the rules of the urban plan uh, is that there, uh, in, inside uh, there would be uh, a walkway uh, that crosses uh, everything, the buildings, uh, the green spaces, and so on. And so, one of the demands uh, in uh, our case, uh, this is the plot, uh, was to uh, always preserve uh, a passage, a, pu a public uh, passage, uh, whatever uh, happens inside uh, the building. And uh, the nice thing, uh, in fact, uh, uh, a situation that one uh, never, uh, that never occurs, and that uh, uh, we also didn't uh, get in other uh, uh, school uh, projects or competitions, is that uh, the size of the site is uh, way smaller uh, than uh, all of the program that you see here. In uh, full color are the inside uh, programs. So it's a, n a day uh, nursery. Um, uh, there is a, an elementary school, there is a sports infrastructure and so on, all combined, but each uh, needing their own uh, appropriate outside spaces, separated. And so uh, that was the uh, occasion for us uh, to take uh, the full envelope available uh, for the whole program, uh, make uh, one uh, whole uh, structure uh, out of it, with uh, one half being a very compact inside building, and the other half uh, a kind of metal cage uh, in which uh, all the 
uh, outside spaces are uh, superposed and uh, in uh, three-dimensional uh, connection uh, with each other. And in between these two parts, uh, the public passage uh, is allowed uh, to pass. Um, this is how it uh, uh, looks more or less. Uh, as I said, uh, each uh, program uh, has its own specific uh, outside space. Uh, that is why uh, they, they are based on uh, this uh, inside uh, section. And uh, the form of the, or the, the the, the form of the inside building, the, the scale of the inside building is merely uh, defined uh, by the size of the sports hall uh, that sits on top of the building. Um, these are all uh, competition drawings. So this is uh, a little later. Uh, uh, this this uh, shows how we uh, designed uh, this uh, configuration of uh, outside spaces. Uh, of course, a playground today is not just uh, anymore uh, a mineral uh, surface. Uh, that uh, during the development of the project, we were clearly told uh, by some uh, uh, parents and some uh, so-called uh, specialists of uh, pedag pedagogy. Uh, so it needed uh, uh, greenery, it needed uh, uh, objects, it needed uh, all kinds of things um, to be uh, uh, organized in uh, one uh, composition. Um, another advantage is that uh, from the central spaces inside the building, one looks uh, through uh, the outside cage to the uh, to the dock, to the water, and uh, to the skyline uh, of uh, Ghent. Um, this is another drawing that shows this uh, division with uh, uh, the passage, public passage uh, under it. And the intention was uh, to have the cage uh, uh, planted uh, with uh, climbing uh, uh, plants uh, with uh, a number of uh, big uh, urban windows cut out of it. And uh, so by today, uh, the, the planting is uh, already on uh, about 10 meter height, uh, three floors uh, height. As I said, the, the building, uh, the compact building is defined by the size of the sports hall with uh, here uh, a bar and some uh, services uh, next to it. Um, uh, that's what you see here, uh, um, looking uh, towards uh, the cage and towards the water. Uh, the, but the rest of the school is mainly organized uh, around uh, one uh, uh, central uh, Mensa, um, with the circulation uh, around it and with uh, a certain degree of transparency uh, throughout the building, uh, organized around uh, this uh, uh, double height uh, Mensa, but also around uh, a more or less monumental stair that uh, unifies uh, the whole building. This is a section uh, that shows the, the restaurant uh, again and the sports hall. Uh, this is a picture of the, uh, the central stair, uh, the restaurant itself with uh, uh, glazed uh, towards uh, the circulation around and also from uh, the classes, uh, one uh, looks uh, through the building towards the uh, central space. Uh, as I said, this um, cage is uh, uh, organized uh, in a more or less uh, complex way. Uh, not only is there a number of uh, playgrounds that are uh, separated uh, from each other, uh, it also, but uh, the circuit, outside circuit, also serves as uh, an uh, escape, uh, one of the escape routes uh, from uh, the uh, inside building. So, a few images. Uh, what you see here is the kind of uh, the children's uh, parliament that is um, installed uh, in one of the playgrounds. Uh, there is uh, monumental stairs here, there is uh, uh, bikes uh, stalled uh, under it, and there is the passage, public passage behind, uh, slides uh, next to the stairs, um, a view uh, from the side of the building towards uh, the city and towards the water, um, another view, 
uh, these uh, pictures were taken uh, earlier, so the, the planting that uh, will m define more uh, the cage uh, is not uh, there yet. This is uh, the trajectory uh, leading up uh, until the bar, the, the mezzanine of the sports hall. Uh, this is the escape way I was talking about, but of course, at the same time, uh, playground. Uh, view in the evening and uh, the main facade uh, towards, uh, the, towards the city center. Uh, this uh, project got uh, a lot of uh, response uh, so far, and basically uh, I think, uh, I imagine uh, that uh, the, the reason for that uh, is that uh, many, uh, school, uh, many schools and many uh, city uh, administrations uh, have this uh, huge problem of uh, making new schools, but lacking uh, the, the site, the terrain uh, for it. So I think it's a, it could become a, a typology uh, where uh, all these outside spaces can be uh, stacked. Um, I guess you all know uh, this project. Uh, well, I was asked, uh, it's not re uh, really a recent project. Uh, especially because it took uh, at least uh, 10 years to realize. And uh, what uh, most uh, uh, spectators do not realize is that uh, the most visible part of it, uh, the, the canopy, uh, is in fact only 20% uh, of the project. Um, I will explain. Uh, the, the main uh, intention uh, of this project is to uh, to create uh, a new uh, evidence, a new coherence uh, between uh, fluxes that uh, exist anyhow, but that were, uh, until this project was done, uh, were uh, 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 represented or organized in a very uh, chaotic uh, way. Um, some of you might uh, remember how the uh, Rohir uh, plus uh, looked before this project was done. I'll, I'll show a picture. Uh, but the, the basic thing is simply that um, Rohir is uh, here, uh, situated on the map of uh, public transport in Brussels. Uh, there is uh, a public space uh, on top, uh, but there is uh, two metro lines that cross each other, and uh, on the surface there is a gigantic uh, uh, number of uh, buses uh, passing by all the time. There's uh, during daytime, uh, more or less three uh, buses per minute uh, passing here. And uh, until now, uh, this relation between public space and uh, underground uh, was not uh, well established. Uh, also, uh, Rohir is uh, a kind of is uh, a square, uh, but it is also a kind of uh, a kind of spot uh, in the city that uh, is capable of uh, connecting. Uh, different neighborhoods uh, in the city. Um, one can say that uh, the North Quarter is very badly uh, connected uh, to the city center and uh, we thought uh, from the beginning that uh, that could be one of the roles of the, of the Rohir uh, uh, Plus. So this is a, a picture that shows the old situation. In fact, uh, the whole uh, square was uh, taken by uh, asphalt, uh, uh, moving cars also towards the underground, but also connecting to the streets behind uh, from uh, the inner city ring. And uh, the only thing that was uh, left in between them was this kind of uh, green, small green surfaces that uh, were uh, almost not accessible uh, for pedestrians. Some of you might also remember this uh, glass uh, pyramid that is standing here, that is uh, giving uh, daylight to um, um, a congress space uh, that is uh, built uh, underground. The starting point for us was also that uh, uh, this whole uh, site is in fact a gigantic, was already uh, in fact a gigantic uh, underground building. Even uh, as it was uh, uh, constructed in the 60s, uh, even uh, in terms of uh, stability, directly connected uh, to the high rises that sit uh, around. So um, the fluxes that we are talking about, uh, vertical fluxes uh, from the metro uh, towards the surface and the other way around, 
they uh, existed uh, in another way until uh, the 50s when uh, on uh, Rogier Square was in fact uh, the front uh, square of the North Station. The North Station uh, was moved uh, to a few hundred meters uh, to the north uh, in order to be able uh, to let uh, trains climb up uh, from the north-south north -south, uh, junction uh, from the underground to the surface. So they needed uh, to, uh, to move the, the station. And so ever since that moment in the 50s when the, 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 the station was replaced, um, or let's say before there, there was a kind of uh, total evidence, uh, coherence between uh, the function of the station and the public space uh, in front. You see here uh, lots of pedestrians, you see uh, trams that uh, go around uh, uh, the square and that uh, bring people uh, to and from the station, so quite uh, a coherent thing. And this uh, disappeared uh, uh, once the metro uh, was uh, installed. But as I said, uh, the, the visible part, the canopy, is only uh, one-fifth of the whole uh, uh, project because uh, we uh, reorganized uh, the whole underground, which, is, which goes four to five uh, floors uh, deep. And uh, there was also a big deal of uh, uh, reorganizing the surface uh, itself, uh, giving more space to uh, pedestrians and uh, taking away uh, some from uh, cars. So uh, this is the... The, the side plan that uh, uh, shows uh, what was, uh, what was uh, built and uh, what was done. Uh, somehow uh, the surface was divided uh, into three uh, clearly, dif clearly different uh, forms of uh, open space. One square that is uh, rather empty. Uh, simply because uh, the high-rise uh, around the square uh, makes uh, that it can never be uh, a very comfortable uh, uh, public space because of the wind these uh, high-rises take. On the contrary, uh, this is a south facade uh, along the city, uh, inner city ring, uh, south facade that is uh, much less uh, vulnerable uh, to these uh, harsh uh, wind uh, conditions. And uh, there is the reduction of the, next to it, of the uh, car uh, circulation uh, on, the, on the city ring. To explain uh, the, the whole project, uh, there is uh, these few uh, sections. Uh, this one is uh, uh, in between uh, with the Belfius uh, Bank on the right and the uh, uh, city um, shopping center uh, on the left. Uh, the city, the, the ring road uh, inside Brussels is uh, installed here. Uh, under, in grey, I hope it's grey, yeah, uh, in grey is uh, indicated everything that uh, pre-existed. So there is a, a parking garage, uh, there is a congress uh, space that I already mentioned. Uh, there is uh, one metro line, two directions in, uh, in this section, and there is another one, a pre-metro, that sits uh, under it and that crosses, uh, that is a little further than this uh, section. Then there is uh, a pedestrian connection uh, from this uh, hub uh, towards the shopping center under the uh, boulevard. And uh, there is the car tunnel uh, that is uh, installed here. Um, in the other direction, uh, uh, one sees um, the, our intervention, uh, or uh, in fact, we cut out uh, from an uh, existing underground building, uh, a patio, uh, in which and around which we concentrated all of the uh, vertical uh, circulation for pedestrians. So elevators, uh, escalators, uh, stairs, and a whole battery of uh, escape stairs uh, from the metro. And uh, this, uh, this uh, patio is covered by a canopy that is larger than the, uh, than the patio simply because it is also the bus station on, on this side. So um, here you see on a model, uh, the patio was carved out here in between Congress space and car parks. 
uh, and the uh, existing uh, central space of this, uh, this uh, public transport uh, hub, bringing light into the uh, Congress space, but uh, of course also in the metro uh, space with the connection towards the city center uh, here, with an access to the, to the trams, underground trams uh, that sit uh, uh, on this level. Uh, one also sees the configuration of the uh, horizontal and uh, vertical uh, circulation, a uh, little bit better uh, visible uh, on this plan. Uh, first of all, uh, on top, on grade uh, level, there is uh, a bridge, a pedestrian bridge, that is in the axis of the uh, Rue Neuve, uh, shopping street, uh, leading it uh, towards uh, the, the northern part of the uh, of, uh, towards uh, uh, North Station and so on. Then, uh, under it, uh, there is an escalator, and, uh, which is uh, simply uh, organized in this way because the needed length uh, for it uh, only uh, fits in a diagonal way inside this rectangle. And this rectangle was uh, basically uh, defined uh, by uh, the, this uh, stability uh, standards uh, for uh, the, the underground building and the buildings uh, next to it. So we were not completely free uh, to define the rectangle uh, as we uh, wanted in, in stability terms. Then under the uh, escalator, there is a more or less monumental stair that uh, uh, starts on top uh, from the pedestrian bridge, goes down uh, under the escalator to the Congress space, and goes further down to the minus, uh, one four, uh, minus four, the main uh, uh, floor of the public transport. And uh, in the different facades, uh, we created uh, uh, vitrines, shop windows, uh, from the different uh, functions. While on the lowest floor, uh, the connection uh, towards the metro spaces is uh, open. So this view is uh, with uh, the canopy uh, on top, uh, with the congress space on the right, still not in use today, but there, uh, available. Uh, and uh, with behind this facade, a huge uh, battery of uh, hidden uh, escape stairs. This is another uh, image taken from the minus four with uh, on the right a uh, battery of uh, escalators uh, and uh, stairs also. Uh, we did uh, the reorganization of the underground. Uh, we, we made uh, shop uh, windows and a new plan for, to install shops. We uh, simplified uh, the existing materials, uh, which basically is to uh, bring in a kind of uh, large uh, checkerboard uh, uh, cheap uh, in uh, ceramic uh, tiles and uh, we uh, made the whole ceiling black uh, except for uh, some uh, details uh, and that was the, basically the, the organization of this uh, reorganization of this uh, ground floor. Uh, the canopy uh, is uh, installed in a very precise uh, way in the uh, urban space. As I said before, uh, the, as the, the Rohir uh, Square is a kind of uh, possible uh, connection point between uh, neighborhoods, uh, we found it important to uh, install this, um, this uh, canopy not only uh, above the bus station and the patio, uh, but also in a kind of a gesture uh, towards uh, the old city. That's why it uh, hovers uh, over uh, the boulevard and over the, the cars uh, on the south side. Uh, and that also explains in this plan, uh, we thought uh, it was important to uh, have it in, uh, uh, in this axis, in a kind of symmetric way uh, on the square, uh, in order to improve it, uh, its uh, uh, importance. But then uh, we uh, needed uh, to to, uh, to make the foundations or to use the existing foundations, which is basically a grid, uh, a column grid, uh, concrete uh, of the underground. And that explains this uh, rather strange uh, form uh, of the, the uh, what's it, the socle of the, of the canopy. Uh, as I said, a, a, a rectangle uh, in uh, plan on the ground floor because uh, standing on four existing columns and uh, transforming 
towards the height of uh, uh, six meter uh, into a hexagon uh, in order to fit uh, the structure, the steel structure of the canopy itself. Um, well, you've, you all know the, 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 the object, but uh, the one triangle is about uh, six and a half meters uh, in, uh, on its uh, side. And the whole canopy uh, makes uh, 64 meters, uh, which is uh, an appropriate uh, scale, I think, uh, when one uh, considers the surrounding buildings and the, the open space uh, in between. Um, the, the whole thing is uh, made in steel and covered with uh, a single layer uh, sheet of uh, ETFA uh, reinforced by uh, metal uh, cables. The, um, when it comes to the uh, public space, um, the strip uh, as we named it, uh, it is uh, a very as simple uh, as possible form of public space with some restrictions. Um, one of them uh, being that uh, uh, under the whole Rohir Square and uh, the boulevard in front, there is in fact no earth uh, because everything is built. And so uh, in order to have uh, a form of plantation and a kind of protection uh, uh, from uh, the, the car uh, traffic, uh, we installed these uh, uh, gardens with uh, small trees. And the trees are small simply because uh, there's only in section 70 centimeters of uh, earth uh, available. And then this whole strip is uh, uh, made in such a way that it makes the in topographic uh, terms, it makes the transition uh, from the building facades uh, towards the road that is uh, in a slight, in a dip uh, in front of the, the Rohir Square. And uh, this transition uh, with different uh, levels uh, is at the same time uh, the street furniture. Uh, this simply shows the, the square on the right, more or less uh, empty, uh, the strip itself and the car traffic on the left. And uh, this is uh, uh, probably my preferred uh, image of the, the whole thing uh, when one considers the impact on uh, the city and the visibility and uh, the, the powerful uh, chaos that uh, Brussels uh, is. Also, uh, the canopy has such uh, a size that one uh, almost never sees it uh, as a whole. Uh, from uh, the streets around, uh, one always sees uh, more or less uh, a fragment. Um, we go on with um, a sensitive uh, project in the sense that uh, uh, not everybody uh, is uh, uh, immediately uh, agreeing with what we uh, proposed. Although uh, five years, six years ago, uh, we won uh, the competition uh, because uh, the, our project had uh, a certain degree of uh, evidence for, uh, in fact, um, quite a difficult, uh, a difficult demand, a difficult uh, problem. Uh, this, uh, it is uh, about a museum building in Tournai, um, small city um, in the south of uh, Belgium, uh, a building, a late building by uh, Victor Horta, uh, a museum that he built for uh, a private client who first uh, wanted to uh, install his collection that he uh, gathered uh, end of the 19th century, beginning of the 20th century uh, in Brussels, uh, but who didn't find uh, enough response uh, in Brussels, and so he uh, uh, decided to install it in uh, uh, Tournai. So a building that is specifically made for uh, this uh, collection. Uh, what you see here is uh, a building that has a very strong uh, identity, a strong uh, form. Uh, it is mainly uh, clad in glass. The roofs are mainly in glass. Uh, it has uh, a, clear, um, a clear relation uh, to the series of uh, public spaces that uh, sit in front of here. And it has, at the same time, a very unclear uh, relation with the, the building block it is uh, sitting in, uh, which means that there is a kind of residue uh, space uh, all around it. 
And what one also sees is that uh, for uh, Victor Horta, the internal coheren coherence of the building uh, was uh, an important thing. But we'll go more in detail. The demand uh, was uh, to, um, for this collection, uh, which is a small representation of what it is, basically they are uh, today able to uh, show more or less three to four percent of their uh, whole uh, collection. And uh, they want to do more, uh, so they want to uh, extend uh, the museum and uh, also at the same time, of course, uh, bring uh, better conditions uh, for the paintings that are uh, mainly uh, 19th century, beginning of the 20th, but also uh, much older uh, art, as you see here, uh, Rohir van der Weyden or Rubens, uh, and so on. It's an important collection. Um, it uh, seems to be the fifth uh, collection uh, in Belgium. And, uh, of course, when one uh, thinks, we did this together with, uh, uh, we do this together with uh, Barbara van der Wey, who is an uh, expert uh, in uh, Horta uh, constructions. And um, so what we, as, as the demand is not only to extend, uh, but uh, to uh, make the climatic conditions for these uh, uh, paintings um, a lot better, we are simply obliged to do that. Uh, uh, ICOM uh, asks uh, for uh, this kind of uh, measures in uh, every museum that receives uh, old art. We uh, started to uh, analyze uh, what, is, what is really the architectural uh, quality of this uh, building, or can it be uh, defined in a few uh, sentences? And so uh, we came to three basic, um, basic um, uh, qualities of the building. One uh, being uh, the daylight. The whole building uh, lives from the daylight. At the same time, uh, when we uh, first arrived there, uh, that was in 2015, um, in April, uh, when we entered the building, uh, we saw, we took a picture uh, even, that uh, the temperature uh, inside the building was 29 degrees. So imagine uh, what this uh, becomes in summer. Uh, like many 19th century, 19th century uh, museums, uh, the, this uh, zenithal light is uh, very important, but uh, unadapted uh, to the uh, standards of uh, uh, museum standards of today. Uh, if we would uh, use uh, this building, um, then we would have to uh, cut 90% of the uh, daylight. The plan you see here is, um, and you can see it in uh, some of the, the rooms uh, of Bozar. Once uh, one takes the daylight away, uh, the, the building becomes a, a different uh, thing. That's one thing. Uh, daylight is one essential thing. And this plan uh, shows all the, the ceilings uh, in glass, in green. Uh, the, roof, the roof itself has even more uh, glass. This is an early picture of this uh, inside with two uh, levels, uh, but, uh, but uh, the most important being this uh, daylight coming in uh, with a construction as we know them, uh, a roof uh, in glass and a ceiling, a kind of a bent uh, in arch uh, uh, glass uh, structure uh, under it. The second uh, basic um, quality uh, for us is that uh, there is uh, a front that is uh, very important, that is directed towards these public spaces, that has uh, a facade in uh, natural stone, different kinds of stone. Uh, that was uh, very important for Horta, while uh, the back uh, is uh, neglectable. Uh, let's say uh, the relation uh, between the form of the building and the neighborhood uh, and, and uh, the building block uh, behind is uh, neglectable. So there is this uh, very clear. Uh, difference between the two. Um, and the third, well, that is shown here, basically, uh, this direction towards this uh, uh, chain of uh, public spaces, uh, both uh, mineral and uh, green. Uh, so, in fact, a very, uh, an area in Tournai with a lot of uh, public space. And uh, this being the uh, main facade, entrance facade. And uh, one picture that shows uh, the side uh, facades, 
that are uh, giving onto, that are completely closed, that are in brick, and that are uh, with, with the interstitial uh, uh, space that is uh, used by the, by the, by the city uh, simply for uh, green uh, maintenance of the city. And then the third quality, uh, we think, is uh, this uh, internal uh, coherence. The succession uh, of uh, uh, rooms, hexagonal and others, uh, with a kind of two uh, focal points, with uh, a fine relation between different uh, levels, and uh, with uh, axes uh, that uh, uh, go from uh, one room uh, to the other. So this internal uh, uh, structure is uh, further explicited uh, by the detailing. Uh, here you see some pictures of uh, floors and uh, ceiling. So this uh, configuration, uh, non-orthogonal co configuration is uh, continued in uh, all of the details, which means that uh, it is, becomes uh, really uh, very difficult uh, to another, uh, uh, for another uh, demand uh, uh, for this uh, uh, climatic uh, demands of, the, of, the, of uh, ICOM, which means that it is very difficult to insulate uh, the building. Um, if you wouldn't do that, you would spend an uh, enormous uh, amount of energy in order to reach uh, the climate that is uh, needed. So uh, the front facade cannot be isolated on the outside, as it is a facade in stone, but also not on the inside, uh, because uh, uh, all of these uh, details would be uh, ruined uh, by uh, adding uh, thickness. And so uh, our uh, proposal has been uh, yeah, very uh, in an abstract way represented here. On the left, uh, one sees the uh, existing situation, uh, a city block, uh, quite irregular, built up from uh, individual houses and buildings, uh, with one uh, spot uh, that is uh, uh, unbuilt, uh, a form uh, for the building that has no relation with it, uh, and an interst interstitial space. Our proposal has been uh, two things, simply to fill up the full interstitial space as a, a carpet uh, uh, for new uh, museum uh, uh, space on simply on one level, and at the same time uh, redefining uh, the function of the uh, center of the existing building. Uh, later it became uh, uh, slightly more uh, uh, nuanced in the sense that um, these legs uh, of the building uh, they uh, remain uh, uh, exhibition spaces uh, for us, but for art that does not need uh, this uh, uh, very stringent uh, climate. And uh, proposing uh, that uh, the center of the building uh, could be used uh, for other functions, uh, all while uh, remaining uh, the main entrance to the new uh, configuration. This is a programmatic um, a diagram of uh, uh, the whole thing. So the, the central hall uh, becomes basically public space in continuation uh, of uh, the public spaces that sit uh, in front. Uh, the legs of the building, uh, they form uh, exhibition space uh, altered. A circuit can be made uh, between old and new uh, all the time. Uh, this is the horizontal uh, surface that we uh, built on one layer. Uh, then there is uh, additional spaces uh, because uh, some parts of the existing building have uh, uh, more than one level. Uh, and uh, we add, and some, some uh, blue parts here are uh, underground uh, additions for archiving and so on. And uh, we add uh, a cube uh, on top uh, for uh, temporary uh, exhibitions. Um, with basically uh, three floors. Uh, this is how the new configuration uh, works. Uh, so tra all kinds of uh, trajectories uh, are possible uh, in between this uh, field that can be read uh, as, a, as a field uh, or as a, ser uh, a series of uh, rooms with uh, open corners. Uh, but the trajectory can be uh, in between uh, old and new, uh, between the legs of the old building and the field of the new. Then the the, the, the materials uh, to uh, hang up uh, paintings is uh, not only the new walls, uh, 
but also uh, the garden walls that uh, sit around uh, uh, the whole thing, and also the uh, exterior walls of the existing uh, Horta building. Uh, basically, uh, we don't uh, need to insulate uh, here anymore. I'm simply wrapping uh, one floor around uh, the building, insulates uh, uh, all of this uh, uh, all of these facades uh, uh, around. And uh, at the center, uh, all kinds of functions that one needs uh, to organize a museum and a public space uh, in the middle. This shows the relation uh, between the levels of the uh, existing museum and the new uh, around, uh, exactly on the level of the side street that uh, uh, sits uh, next to it. So the whole trajectory of the exhibition uh, could be on uh, one single uh, level. This is an early model uh, that shows this uh, confrontation between the uh, organic form of the existing museum and the orthogonal uh, organization of the new part with the irregular uh, garden walls uh, around it. In this uh, surface, there is a, a number of uh, outside spaces uh, carved out to uh, let enter uh, a very limited uh, amount of uh, daylight on some uh, specific spots. This is, uh, these are uh, competition uh, views uh, that were produced, uh, indicating here uh, all kinds of uh, activities at the central uh, hall. Uh, exhibition of uh, material uh, from the collection that does not need uh, the perfect climate uh, in these, uh, the legs of the building. Uh, one view of a bigger uh, exhibition uh, hall uh, in the new part with uh, basically uh, artificial light uh, from the top and, uh, and specific daylight uh, on some spots uh, coming in. And another image that uh, shows the diagonal uh, transparency of the hall uh, with, uh, in the far end, uh, one of the outer walls of the existing museum that also becomes uh, part of the scenography. Uh, this image uh, shows the, the cohabitation uh, between uh, old and new. The, the main facade remains as it is, remains also uh, the main entrance uh, to the museum. Uh, these are uh, connecting elements between, uh, well, a facade that is uh, a setback uh, from the main facade, that uh, is uh, the, the wrapping of the, the, the new uh, building, and behind it uh, is the cube uh, that is uh, partly, um, partly opaque, partly uh, with uh, uh, window openings, uh, covered uh, by a metal uh, screen. Uh, that lets in uh, daylight, but uh, that keeps uh, the whole thing uh, pretty much an abstract uh, box. Uh, this is a view uh, from the side, uh, the side street that will serve as a kind of a logistic uh, entrance uh, to the building, loading, uh, unloading of uh, artworks and uh, with the complex uh, behind. We go on. Um, this project is also quite well known by now, but uh, I would say that uh, the main topic of it is not uh, whether uh, for uh, such uh, public function of a province building, province house, uh, whether it is allowed or not to do um, a, an iconic uh, building. I, in fact, I find this, uh, this whole uh, debate um, maybe not that interesting. Uh, what is more interesting here in the specific situation, and this image uh, shows the, the situation of the province house before uh, we built, uh, it is basically uh, this uh, site uh, that uh, dives uh, into the housing uh, neighborhood here, uh, more or less delimited like this, has uh, on the one hand uh, some uh, quality as a green space on some spots, but is nevertheless 90% uh, uh, built or uh, mineralized. While uh, we sit uh, in a city um, that has altogether uh, very little uh, public space, public space and very little uh, green uh, public space. 
Here you also see that there is a, a small park uh, existing in front of the Provincie House, uh, Albert Park, and there is a kind of uh, more local uh, public garden uh, here, Harmony Park. And one sees uh, uh, immediately uh, the potential of it. This, in fact, could become a more vast uh, green space in the center of uh, uh, Antwerp, represented here, uh, of with about the same uh, surface as the, uh, as the central uh, city park, the triangle. Uh, so the ambition uh, from the client from the very beginning was uh, to make this uh, large uh, site uh, available uh, for the city and therefore uh, asking for a very compact building uh, compared uh, to what uh, pre-existed. And on these diagram, uh, diagrams, uh, one sees the, the evolution of our uh, design uh, thought. Uh, the first one uh, shows the existing situation, delimitation of the site that is uh, with the main buildings uh, on it. The smaller ones are not represented here. Uh, so one tower that uh, was built in the 70s and that basically could absolutely not be adapted to to the standards uh, uh, of today, simply because the, the floors uh, were uh, conceived too low in order to bring in necessary uh, techniques and so on. Uh, but with also the kind of strange uh, contradictory uh, limitation of uh, having uh, to uh, maintain a pavilion building, pavilion of, uh, a pavilion of 70 meter uh, long here, that, base, that is represented here that in, during the competition absolutely had to uh, be uh, kept because uh, it could not be destroyed in political terms, let's say. Uh, basically, uh, because the building was built in the 90s and simply too, too young uh, to be destroyed. Also because there were quite some uh, precious uh, materials uh, used. But uh, one, what one uh, sees if, uh, if uh, one ambition is uh, to make this uh, publicly accessible uh, in relation to the park that sits in front, then uh, yeah, the first thing uh, is uh, that this uh, pavilion is a kind of a threshold uh, in terms of uh, uh, connecting uh, the green uh, spaces. So, it was also asked from the beginning to do a very compact building uh, compared to these. So what we did uh, in, in, let's say, an early stage is to uh, put a kind of a bridge building across uh, this pavilion uh, in order, and this pavilion has had a representational uh, function rather, uh, congress uh, uh, and so on. So we uh, set it uh, across. Um, in order uh, to make the internal uh, uh, functioning optimal, but at the same time uh, that meant that this uh, outside space, possibly green space, uh, is cut up in uh, a front and a back. And that was the reason why we, why we basically decided to uh, give a kind of uh, shift to that basic volume in order uh, to take some more distance from uh, some uh, older buildings that are on the corner here, and in order also to open uh, the best part uh, of the park uh, on this uh, side. And here in this model you see uh, the potential of the, the whole, uh, let's say, by doing a very compact building, uh, these uh, three uh, green spaces, all three uh, public, uh, can uh, become more or less uh, one. That has uh, these consequences. Uh, the, the ground, the lowest floor is an orthogonal cross, uh, one being the pavilion and the other being the, the new uh, addition. It must be said that uh, uh, during the design uh, process, we, we, we quickly uh, understood that uh, keeping, physically keeping this uh, old pavilion would in the end be uh, more expensive uh, than uh, replacing it, but uh, that meant, uh, sim and we convinced uh, the client of that, but that meant uh, in fact that the position and the configuration and the basic concept uh, remained uh, the same because we were already uh, close at that moment to the building permit uh, phase of the, of the process. And so this uh, orthogonal cross uh, uh, slowly uh, changes um, to uh, more or less 
shifted volume, uh, and this shift is uh, limited uh, by a vertical uh, core of uh, elevators and stairs that on the ground floor uh, start on one side of the building and that on the uh, top floors end up on the other facade, the back facade. Um, the whole thing, uh, I will not go uh, too much in detail, but the whole thing is a, a very compact building with uh, uh, quite deep uh, floors on the lower levels and uh, more normal uh, office floors on the top level. And so a uh, specific uh, structure was needed. Basically, there are no columns uh, inside. There is two uh, vertical cores that uh, make the lateral uh, stability. And uh, on the lower floors, we add a truss in between them in order to make this uh, a large uh, span. But basically, uh, for the rest, it is the, it is the facade that uh, supports the floors. And as it is still a bridge building over a pavilion with an outside space, uh, a terrace in between them, uh, this bridge uh, had to be uh, given form uh, by the, basically by the structure in the facade. That's why uh, initially we ended up with a kind of triangular uh, structure. And then these uh, triangles turned out to be uh, quite good in terms of uh, uh, the balance of uh, letting enough daylight in and uh, keeping uh, the heat of the sun uh, out simply by means of... Uh, uh, low uh, glass surface uh, close to the floor and a maximum uh, glass surface uh, close to the ceiling. Uh, this uh, shows the internal configuration. It is uh, a partly public uh, building. Most of the public functions, uh, congress uh, and, and exhibition and so on are organized on the lower floors. Uh, there is a part that is uh, more or less regular uh, offices and then there is a few uh, other functions like a library, uh, uh, on top. And, uh, well, we, we make a walk uh, through the building. This is the entrance level, with uh, this being the pavilion, half sunken, with an auditorium and an, uh, a political um, uh, forum that also can be uh, used for other uh, functions, exhibition space uh, in between. As I said, uh, sunken into the ground. The, the surface of the park is here, the ground. Uh, so it uh, goes down about uh, three and a half meters. Um, this uh, being uh, the center part uh, exhibition uh, space with a small uh, stair leading to the floor above and behind it the, the, the council uh, hall uh, with uh, more noble uh, materials uh, centered around uh, one uh, central point. Uh, above it is uh, mainly an empty uh, glass uh, uh, pavilion, both for uh, events and uh, exhibitions. Uh, some larger uh, meeting rooms um, next to it. Uh, and with uh, a patio uh, in the middle that leads through a monumental stair uh, towards the uh, roof terrace that sits on top of the uh, pavilion. So the whole pavilion is in glass, uh, while the two legs of the new, of the main building uh, are uh, made out of concrete uh, with these triangle, triangular uh, windows. Another image of the patio looking up to the terrace above. Uh, yeah, the whole surface in an empty uh, uh, situation. Uh, the, the, the meeting halls uh, in the park. Um, some detailing uh, structure uh, only two columns in a width of uh, uh, 30 meters uh, with uh, cantilevers and with uh, no structure uh, in the facade. The level of the terrace on top of the pavilion with uh, semi-public functions on one side and the restaurant of the, of the Provincia is on the other side, uh, giving onto, both onto the terrace. And here we are in front of this uh, stair coming up from below. A view from the restaurant and also a view towards this uh, older building that also belongs to the province and that we wanted to uh, escape from or uh, not uh, to throw too much uh, shadow on. Uh, this is a regular uh, floor uh, of the offices, basically an open floor uh, with some uh, spaces uh, secluded uh, for meetings 
and uh, with the cores uh, changing uh, in position on every floor. Uh, one image of uh, such a regular office floor with tilted uh, uh, facades. Uh, above it uh, sits a library that is uh, a duplex, a double height uh, uh, space with uh, archiving uh, space around it. Shown here with three levels of, uh, in fact, two levels of the regular building levels, but three uh, levels uh, for the books. And uh, finally, the upper floors that are the political floors, if one can say so, with uh, uh, more traditional uh, offices, separated offices uh, that look, uh, for instance, like this. Uh, organized around uh, one uh, central uh, patio that has uh, double height. Few images to conclude the way the thing sits uh, in the park um, with a view on the, onto the auditorium, the higher level of the auditorium going down here and uh, the meeting rooms um, above it and, and the terrace on top. Uh, so the, the park itself, as I said, has a kind of uh, existing quality uh, on one side, uh, uh, the part that risks to be the back side, but, uh, uh, and a more uh, open uh, part that is new, that is on top of a parking garage uh, with uh, new trees uh, all around. Uh, this is a view from the Elisabeth Lay, which is uh, uh, basically the front side of the of the of the new building and of the site. Um, and now something more exotic. Um, since a long time, uh, we have been uh, working on a project that uh, goes on forever, I guess, uh, with uh, a person. The in initiative is uh, a person that we uh, highly estimate. I can't say it's our best client because some of our clients uh, sit here in the public. Uh, but uh, the, this man is uh, the Prime Minister uh, of uh, Albania uh, who reigns uh, the small country that has a communist uh, uh, past. And uh, when we first uh, arrived there to do a competition, uh, this is uh, the image, it's, it's a city, it's about the city uh, called Vlora in the south of Albania. And uh, basically this image uh, represents uh, its relation uh, to the sea. It, has, uh, it sits in a splendid uh, situation, but at that time a number of uh, illegal buildings had been destroyed uh, by the government. And this is how the, uh, basically the... The, the beach and the, the, the relation between sea and city uh, was uh, given form. Uh, the competition is, uh, was uh, about, was huge in fact, uh, it was the first competition ever in the city of Vlora. Uh, for the presentation uh, they hired uh, the theater uh, which could take uh, more or less 500 people. It was completely filled. And outside on the street, they installed uh, a screen. And there was really uh, easily a thousand people uh, following uh, all the presentations of the, of the competition. First competition ever. And uh, the subject uh, is, uh, of course, uh, how to uh, regenerate the city. It came out of, um, it came out of uh, a communist uh, period. Uh, it has basically no economy, uh, so no, not a lot of future uh, for the people uh, living there, which is the case for many parts of uh, uh, Albania. But basically, uh, this uh, line uh, shows our design, and it is uh, basically everything uh, redefining uh, the whole public space of the city. In first instance, uh, uh, the whole line uh, between uh, sea and uh, city and it has a length of uh, about eight and a half uh, kilometers. And uh, it is blocked uh, by, at the moment of the competition, it was blocked by a harbor that is uh, completely isolated uh, from the city center, while uh, the central boulevard uh, in the city is this line. So we proposed uh, a whole series of uh, uh, different forms of public space uh, adapted to different uses, uh, adapted also to, uh, to the topography, the city itself being relatively flat, uh, but then 
uh, culminating in a kind of uh, uh, sharp uh, topography between sea surface and uh, uh, hills or mountains uh, behind. And the whole of this uh, being united uh, by this uh, red line, which is a promenade of uh, uh, eight uh, and a half uh, kilometers. Um, we'll do, uh, I'll, I'll, I will go a little bit more uh, in detail. The, um, the first uh, part we did uh, was a stretch of uh, three and a half uh, kilometers. Uh, financed by the European Union, uh, but as I said before uh, uh, this evening, uh, they, are, uh, they have uh, uh, lots of talent uh, in Albania to find uh, money um, uh, everywhere. They don't have it themselves, but uh, this first part was, uh, used, uh, was uh, paid by the European Union. If the European Union would not have done it, uh, then they would simply go to the Middle East and find the money. Uh, after all, uh, they are on, uh, in a topographic uh, situation, which was the far end of the Ottoman uh, Empire. And so the Middle East uh, hopes uh, to find some souls there, uh, while the European Union uh, might consider to, uh, to take it up into Europe. But therefore, uh, some, uh, some more um, yeah, adaptations uh, need to be done. But uh, first image shows uh, a huge uh, square uh, that we, and the, the promenade is basically uh, one uh, specific material that is uh, continued uh, on the whole length, uh, but that uh, meanders uh, in between uh, the city and the sea. Uh, so depending on the situation, it, is, it sits uh, along the waterfront uh, or more uh, inland. A little more south, uh, there is this... Uh, kind of a bay in the form of uh, stairs. And uh, at, the, at the focus point of these stairs, uh, we made uh, our first island, uh, which is a, a concrete uh, surface uh, that is exactly on the height of the uh, water level that uh, disappears uh, twice a day uh, under the water level. And that was initially uh, intended to uh, have, um, to have uh, manifestations, uh, concerts, uh, uh, that could then be uh, looked at uh, from the stairs uh, 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 around it. Uh, you, see, you see the electricity line that uh, uh, comes up here in the middle of the island. Uh, but in uh, practice, uh, there is, it is more used as a helicopter platform uh, today uh, than for real uh, public space. Uh, we go further south. Uh, this is kind of uh, a green, uh, a newly uh, accommodated uh, green space with uh, uh, trees that start to grow. We also did, uh, redid all of the infrastructure behind, so there's a new road. Car traffic was drastically uh, reduced. Uh, bicycle paths, uh, even uh, if at that moment almost no Albanian had a bicycle, uh, is installed. And there's uh, large uh, terraces uh, in front of the uh, commercial buildings uh, on the other side. Uh, this is a little further south uh, again, uh, where there is uh, stretches of uh, beach, uh, but also uh, beaches that are uh, partly uh, forested uh, in order to uh, provide uh, shadow. And as you see here, the promenade is meandering in between the road and uh, uh, the beach. Further on, uh, there is uh, sports infrastructure, uh, again, uh, along the promenade that sits here on the seaside uh, with uh, uh, natural stone squares uh, in between. And uh, so this first uh, part of three kilometers ended with a kind of uh, belvedere uh, towards uh, the sea uh, made in travertine, um, which is again shown here. Today, uh, we are uh, adding a stretch of about uh, uh, 900 meters uh, to it. You recognize here uh, the sports infrastructure, the, the square I was talking about. And here, uh, the situa topographical situation is completely different. Uh, here, there's a steep, uh, steep hill, uh, height difference between uh, the, the sea level and uh, the nature. And so, very little space uh, for roads and for uh, beach uh, accommodation. So basically, uh, this stretch is, uh, consists of uh, uh, very long uh, stairs that lead into the water uh, and a number of uh, features uh, in between the road and the water, like uh, reusing an existing pier, 
bring, uh, making uh, stairs, ramps and so on that lead uh, to the surface, uh, providing an outside uh, swimming pool, a 50 meter uh, swimming pool uh, here and a children's uh, pool uh, here on the stairs. Uh, providing mineral surface, uh, uh, bars, uh, uh, a parking garage uh, under here, uh, parts of uh, beach uh, also, uh, and so on. That is uh, in construction uh, today. Uh, you see here uh, before the promenade is continued, but you see the holes for the trees that uh, are always uh, crisscrossing uh, this promenade. You see an existing concrete structure uh, that on which we will build a new pavilion and you see part of the uh, stairs that we installed and uh, underway is the parking garage that uh, sits behind here and on the far corner left uh, one sees uh, uh, one, uh, one, uh, one corner of the uh, new uh, swimming pool, the large uh, swimming pool. This is a black uh, concrete wall uh, that is a retaining wall for the road. Um, few images, uh, same, the same wall with a bench uh, uh, all along it, with uh, uh, smaller beaches uh, in front. Uh, the um, children's pool uh, in, under construction, uh, all while the, the promenade is still not there yet. Uh, stairs uh, leading down, um, ramps that become bars uh, and so on. Um, so yeah, it's unfinished but uh, already used and still under construction. Then we pass uh, through the, to the north again, uh, where we made this uh, first this uh, square, and where uh, today uh, the harbor is uh, being emptied, as you can see on these uh, pictures, uh, because it moves to the north of the city, and all of a sudden uh, this main boulevard uh, becomes uh, or, or gets into a direct relation uh, with the seafront and uh, it also, uh, moving the harbor, means that uh, new uh, uh, developments, public space as well as uh, uh, private things, uh, can start. And so a next step uh, for us was to install uh, a park uh, simply in the prolongation of the boulevard that uh, turns away here and that uh, uh, follows the, the coastline. Uh, which means basically that this be can become public space. It, we designed uh, uh, our first park um, without, uh, without uh, a, design, a garden designer, only with the help of uh, botanists. So it's quite an architectural uh, park in the end. And it simply, it's, uh, it, has one, uh, it has a number of uh, different gardens with uh, 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 yeah, walking uh, space in between them. Uh, the park is delimited by a gallery that we install here to, to stop, let's say, the chaotic uh, building that sits around it. And this uh, series of circles uh, starts with an existing roundabout on which uh, we uh, just planted uh, trees. So there will be a multitude of uh, uh, usable gardens, uh, more or less usable. Uh, all kinds of uh, features uh, will be made in it. This is an early uh, image that shows this uh, sequence of circles with a uh, uh, walking uh, surface in between them. We also integrate a number of uh, existing uh, objects, uh, this being a, a house of national importance, the independence after the Ottoman Empire uh, was uh, independence was installed from this house, this, so it uh, became a small museum uh, of independence and uh, needs to be uh, integrated in the new park. This is, these are uh, fresh uh, images from yesterday. Uh, they, this is this museum, this is the gallery. Uh, here it leads to the uh, main boulevard of the, of the city. Uh, this is a Hortus, will be a Hortus conclusus with uh, a kind of uh, uh, concrete uh, elements uh, separating it with only uh, two small doors uh, in the end uh, from the rest of the park. Uh, there's a number of features. Uh, as I said, there's also very simple uh, olive gardens or citrus uh, gardens uh, or silent gardens. You, you see one of them you see here. It's simply a circle uh, with a dike uh, all around uh, of three meters high, uh, in which uh, a lot of the noise of the city is uh, uh, taken out. 
Uh, this is an image showing the beginning of the park where the roundabout is. Uh, the next one is, will be a bus stop uh, in two directions. Uh, the, then the, the road moves out of the park. Uh, this is, will be a skate ring. Uh, here you see the edge of the silent uh, garden and you also see the, sorry, the beginning of the, of the gallery, uh, about 350 meters long, uh, leading separating uh, the park from the rest and leading towards uh, the seafront. Here is uh, other elements under construction, uh, inclined gardens, but there will be much more elements like uh, huge uh, pergolas, uh, fountains, uh, and so on. Uh, this is again an image of this uh, silent garden uh, in the making. Uh, this is an image of the gallery. Uh, this is uh, uh, to make the form of the park uh, complete, a kind of mineral uh, corner uh, that will be an event room, open air uh, event room, uh, sunken, uh, about uh, almost two meters lower than the general park level, uh, with windows onto the sea. Uh, and this is uh, a hill, uh, one of the circles is simply a hill that one can uh, climb uh, to uh, to look uh, far uh, into the sea towards the, uh, the Sima uh, Islands that sit in front of the city. We go on. Uh, the next question, uh, and basically this is maybe the first part that was strictly uh, not part of any competition, but uh, the first kilometers that we did uh, completely transformed uh, the city in the sense that uh, uh, new initiatives are being taken, lots of them, and it uh, gives a kind of uh, a real uh, revival of uh, social life uh, in the city. So it is the historic center of the city with uh, mainly uh, low buildings uh, all around, uh, individual uh, houses and so on. Uh, but again with a certain uh, importance in, in the sense of uh, uh, nationality of the, of, uh, with uh, scul existing sculptures, but also with uh, heritage uh, element uh, from the Roman time uh, here, for instance. Uh, so here we defined again a number of uh, specific uh, spots, uh, one big uh, square, for instance, in front of this uh, uh, sculpture with uh, a covered uh, marketplace uh, here. You see it better uh, from here. So again, the same uh, way of conceiving uh, public space, specific spots that are connected by uh, inter interspace uh, that is uh, mainly of uh, uh, one uh, specific green, in this case also, uh, quality. Um, so this is um, underway also. You see an overall plan uh, here. And uh, what you also see is uh, a construction that sits here that does not really fit in the fabric that one sees around. In fact, it is an, uh, an illegal uh, uh, concrete uh, construction, very large, uh, more than 20,000 square meters, uh, a very big uh, sockel uh, with a tower on top, and uh, the demand uh, we got uh, was to think about uh, taking it away, basically, maybe leaving the sockle and uh, reusing it, uh, but uh, to take away this uh, tower. Um, it was, uh, it was um, bought uh, by the government, and uh, their intention is to make a kind of regional uh, development center uh, in it, which means that uh, they would need a lot of uh, uh, different spaces, atelier-like, uh, office-like, uh, all kinds of things. And in the end, uh, what we did is uh, to convince the Prime Minister not to destroy uh, the concrete structure of the tower, but to carve uh, a kind of trajectory, vertical trajectory, throughout uh, the sockel, and then uh, curling up uh, around the tower, uh, what you see here, uh, until, uh, until the, the top level in order to uh, give to all these uh, different functions a kind of uh, front door uh, for every uh, department. So slow uh, stairs uh, leading up, starting here, 
crossing uh, the whole Sokol, then uh, going up, uh, passing by uh, Patio's inside, and uh, reappearing uh, on the front uh, here, leading to the roof of the Sokol, and then uh, climbing up inside the tower until uh, the last uh, level. And this, uh, this proposal was inspired by uh, this uh, picture, uh, which was taken on uh, a, um, a, a national uh, day, uh, where you see all the red uh, Albanese flags. Uh, nationalism is important, it seems, in uh, Albania, and you see that uh, this concrete structure is only halfway here, but uh, is on this day completely filled by people. That's where this uh, uh, vertical street uh, idea uh, comes from. This is just an image that uh, shows what it could do into the uh, existing building. And to end with, um, I come back uh, to the harbor, uh, where a uh, first uh, private project is now uh, being developed. The harbor remains a kind of pleasure uh, uh, harbor, uh, indicated here. And uh, along the park, along the gallery, uh, a new uh, neighborhood uh, will be built uh, of about uh, 20 uh, different, uh, 20 uh, individual buildings with uh, mainly Public, uh, public functions or, or uh, restaurants and so on on the ground floor, uh, housing on top, and uh, maybe here and there uh, a hotel. And it was simply conceived uh, uh, out of the uh, need uh, to provide a maximum of uh, views uh, towards uh, the harbor and the sea. And so uh, we've uh, stepped buildings that uh, provide lots of uh, uh, outside uh, space for the uh, inhabitants. Uh, with uh, full glazing, but uh, covered terraces uh, on the short side of the buildings and uh, screens, uh, concrete screen uh, facades on the sides uh, in order to uh, provide uh, privacy uh, for the uh, apartments uh, in between this, uh, these uh, quite densely uh, organized uh, neighborhood. And this is the the central street that uh, cuts uh, through the whole, whole neighborhood with uh, shops, restaurants on the ground floor and uh, new housing uh, on top of it. And that will be the last image. Thank you. <laughs>